Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revisiting Archive, where history comes alive through compelling narratives and in-depth analysis. This is the 11th episode in our series on Spanish history, and today we'll delve into a topic that is not just crucial to Spain, but had ramifications across all of Europe. The balance of power concerns that led to the War of Spanish Succession. As the Spanish crown teetered on the edge of a royal vacuum, all of Europe held its breath, carefully gouging how the distribution of Spanish assets would affect the fragile equilibrium between the continent's major powers. If you've been following our series, you know that the stakes couldn't have been higher. So let's dive right into it. The demise of Charles II of Spain in the closing months of the 17th century ignited a powder keg of geopolitical tensions that had been simmering in the European landscape. At the center of this complex web of alliances and hostilities lay the philosophical doctrine of the balance of power, developed over centuries and refined through countless diplomatic and military interactions. This doctrine aimed to ensure that no single European power could rise to a position of overwhelming dominance. The bequeathing of the Spanish throne to Philip of Anjou, a Bourbon and a grandson of Louis XIV of France, set alarm bells ringing across European capitals. This video seeks to explore in detail how this particular royal succession exacerbated existing anxieties about the balance of power and led to the series of events culminating in the War of Spanish Succession. The balance of power was not just a theoretical concept, but an operative principle that had informed European geopolitics for several centuries. Its roots can be traced back to the Peace of Westphalia in 1648, which ended the Thirty Years' War and established a tenuous equilibrium among the principal European states. This balance was safeguarded through an intricate network of treaties, diplomatic marriages, and sometimes military interventions. However, by the late 17th century, several factors such as the rise of France as a dominant military power and the decline of Spain had already put this balance under strain. This will of Charles II acted as a catalyst, pushing the fragile system to its breaking point. Nations around Europe therefore found themselves compelled to re-evaluate these strategies and alliances to prevent a Bourbon-dominated monolithic power from emerging. The potential union of the French and Spanish crowns under the Bourbon family was something that sent shockwaves through the courts of Europe. If realized, such a union would create an entity that commanded formidable military prowess thanks to France's seasoned army and advanced navy and unprecedented economic resources due to Spain's extensive overseas colonies. The combined territories would stretch from the Americas in the west to the Philippines in the east and from the low countries of Europe down to the boot of Italy. The strategic implications were staggering. A Franco-Spanish alliance under a single crown would not only possess a monumental pool of manpower and resources, but would also control vital trading routes and choke points, something that would jeopardize the commercial interests of maritime nations like England and the Dutch Republic. These were not idle fears. They were palpable risks that prompted hurried diplomatic and military preparations. Spain's territorial possessions were a linchpin in the global balance of power. Holding territories in Italy such as Naples and Sicily meant controlling vital Mediterranean trading routes, something of great interest to the Holy Roman Empire and its Austrian Habsburgs. Additionally, the Spanish Netherlands was a wealthy and strategically located region whose control could severely disadvantage England and the Netherlands in terms of European trade. Even beyond Europe, Spain's colonies in the Americas were legendary for their wealth. These colonies were sources of precious metals and valuable commodities like sugar and tobacco. The prospect of these vast territories falling under a single Bourbon dominion led to heightened tensions and a flurry of diplomatic activity aimed at preventing such an outcome. Before the cannons roared and soldiers marched, there was a concerted effort to solve the succession crisis through diplomatic means. Treaties like the First and Second Partition Treaties were earnest attempts to distribute Spanish territories in such a way as to maintain European stability. However, these treaties were doomed by a web of conflicting national interests and deep-rooted mistrust among European powers. For instance, Austria was not willing to make concessions that would see Italy falling under French influence. While England and the Dutch Republic were preoccupied with checking French naval and commercial power, in the end, Collective inability to come to a diplomatic agreement signaled the exhaustion of peaceful options 
and set the stage for the inevitable conflict, the War of Spanish Succession. In retrospect, the complexities surrounding the balance of power in early 18th century Europe were exacerbated by the Spanish succession crisis to an extent that war became almost unavoidable. Doctrine, which had served for centuries as a stabilizing force, faced its most severe test as the prospect of a united Bourbon dynasty controlling an expansive global empire loomed large. Failed diplomatic initiatives and a tense atmosphere full of distrust and competitive interests ultimately led the European powers down the path of military confrontation. The War of Spanish Succession thus can be seen as both a failure and a reassertion of the balance of power principle, influencing European and global politics for decades thereafter. And there you have it, the intricate dynamics and failed diplomatic efforts that preceded the War of Spanish Succession. The complex weave of alliances, vested interests, and philosophical doctrines like the balance of power shaped the course of European history, setting the stage for the geopolitical landscape we recognize today. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into a crucial juncture in Spanish and European history, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Revisiting Archive for more exciting historical narratives. We're far from finished with our journey through Spanish history, so make sure to stay tuned for our upcoming episodes. Until next time, keep revisiting history because the past is never really past. It's the prologue to our present. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.